What's up guys, Killer Meme Star, back with another top 5 video. For this one, I wanted to cover what I think are 5 of the worst changes ever made to Smite over the years. I've been playing Smite since early 2014, and believe me, I've seen way more than 5 terrible changes made to Smite, but these are, I think, the worst ones ever done. Let me know what you think about these placements down below, and if you do end up enjoying this video, I have tons more just like it on the channel, so make sure you subscribe for those, but let's get right into this with number 5. Number 5, the speed buff removal in Season 3. By far one of the most frustrating things about being a jungler in Smite is getting your speed buff invaded. I don't think anyone is doubting that. Not only do you lose your buff which severely affects your farm, rotations and ganks, but the enemy also gets those benefits instead of you. Even if you're not a jungle man, I'm sure most of you have felt the pain or seen the rage when a jungler loses their speed. You have fucking enemy speed? Well in season 3, half the player base lost their speed and collectively lost their shit as well. In the launch patch of Season 3, some pretty major changes were made to the Conquest map, the principal one among them being the extremely controversial change made to the speed buff. So instead of the standard two speed buffs, one for each jungler on their own side of the map, there was one single speed camp located near Fire Giant. These fire elementals held the power of the speed buff between them, each one granted one third of the past speed buff's power. So to get a full power speed buff, you needed to secure all three of these fire elementals. Seems easy enough, until you realise they're in a neutral position on the map and there's only one camp. So both junglers had to fight over this one camp and whoever got the majority of the buffs would just win the early game. If you got to these camps first and secured even just two of them, that's a significant advantage on the enemy jungler. But god forbid the enemy has taken all three of these by the time you get there. At that point it's like you started the game with no speed buff. It really was comparable to the modern day speed buff invades we've had in the past few months, but that happened every single game. Yeah, I don't think I need to say too much more on this. This change had rippling effects across the entire game, and while I applaud high res for trying exciting new things, this wasn't it, Chief. Granted, they did revert this change around 3 or 4 months into the season, but for me, the season as a whole was already soured in my mind because of how it started. Number 4, Divine Uprising. So many of you watching may have heard of this. Divine Uprising was a cosmetic event put on by High res from May to October in 2018. Pretty similar to how events are run today, with skins and avatars, pedestals, hood themes and all that other trash you never want to buy but have to anyway. So what was so atrocious about this event? Well, literally everything was locked behind chests, and I mean everything. To be honest, I was one of the few people who didn't have a massive problem with this event. I thought it was scummy and I voiced my concerns at the time, but it's something every multiplayer game company is doing nowadays. The community as a whole though was in uproar over this event. Leading up to this, high res had been ramping up chests and skins that could have easily been direct purchased for 600 gems were shoved into a chest for 300 gems but with 200 ward skins and 50 voice packs, so you had about a 0.1% chance of actually getting what you wanted. People are already tired of chests and cosmetics they don't want being shoved down their throats before this event, but I feel this event was really the straw that broke the camel's back. In itself, it wasn't that much worse than your standard chess shenanigans from high res, but it was a culmination of all the unrest in the community beforehand that kind of overflowed when this event was announced. People had had enough, and they took to Reddit to try and get the system overhauled, and actually succeeded. A little ways into the event, high res changed how the system worked, and allowed the skins to be directly purchased for more gems if you didn't want to roll the chest. It still wasn't an ideal system because the skins were very overpriced, but at least people could actually buy what they wanted and not have to gamble for it. Number 3, the Golden Bow Rework. So the only season to have two entries on this list, the Season 3 Golden Bow Rework has to be top 5 in terms of the negative impact it had on the game. Golden Bow was an item very similar to Golden Blade, the blade was modelled after the bow, however the bow didn't have the restriction of melee only gods that the blade has now, so you could buy Golden Bow on any class that used physical power, including hunters. When this item was changed, you could buy Throwing Dagger, the tier 2 of the item, and 3 potions as your starting build, and already be AoE clearing the wave with auto attacks from minute 1. Yes, the tier 2 of the item back then still had the AoE passive, just in a slightly toned down version. This essentially led to the biggest ADC heavy metagame we've ever had, rivaling even the Soul Eater and Season 2 Heartseeker Hunter metas. The sheer amount of free farm that ADCs could get with this item was ridiculous. They never had to use any mana, were left alone in lane as the support roamed, and would just insta clear the wave with a few auto attacks, then go farm elsewhere. There was relatively low aggression in the duo lane as well due to multiple factors, but for the most part it was just that you may as well go farm more instead of trying to fight someone, because they can just instantly clear the wave with Jibo and then hide on the tower. So the entire ADC metagame was just power farm until you're above even solo laners by like 2 or 3 levels, then just run through the entire team with your 6 items to their 4. 
Perhaps this meta was fun for a small segment of dedicated ADC mains that enjoy shitting on everyone without requiring an ounce of skill, but for most players this change was a negative one and it kind of destroyed the game for a few months when it was implemented. That alone means it deserves a spot on this list. Number 2, Release Guan Yu. So Release Guan has become somewhat of a legend in the Smite community due to his status as the most OP god to ever exist in the game. So I'm sure you've heard of him if not seen his utter destruction firsthand. This was way back in closed beta, but Release Guan would dominate every game he was in pretty much regardless of the player using him or their build. I have a more in depth video covering everything about Release Guan that I'll link for you in a card here. Now, I need you to know that this next sentence is 100% serious and not hyperbole, this is factually true. His heal and dash had a 0 second cooldown. Now hear me out, they weren't technically 0 second base cooldowns, but due to the mechanic that reduced his cooldowns by 2 seconds whenever he healed an ally with the 1 or damaged an enemy with the 2, you could take 4 seconds off of their cooldowns and after CDR they were lower than 4 seconds base, so you could reduce them down to 0 seconds fairly easily, allowing you to literally never run out of abilities to cast and heal for 4 to 500 every time you mashed 1 on the keyboard. Not only that though, his 3 scaled at 200% magical power, yeah not physical power which would already be busted, but magical power, since he was a guardian at release. You know, magical power, that thing you can get 800 of, so this was easily hitting for over 1500 damage alone without the base damage, and only had a 13 second base cooldown. That 13 seconds was also reduced by his heal and dash spam that he was doing all the time, reducing it by 2 seconds every use. So it was more like a 5 second cooldown in reality. Getting 2 heals and 2 dashes off in between uses of this ability was pretty realistic, that's how insane this god was at release. His ultimate was just as busted of the rest of his kit as well. It was essentially Amaterasu's current ultimate that was repurposed for her from the original Guan Yu kit. However, on release Guan, the ability hit for 900 base damage and 135% magical scaling. Don't ask me why this guardian ability that's near unmissable and comes with a 2 second silence and a 2 second stun hits harder than Cillaral, because I have no answer for you. That's basically release Guan in a nutshell. I have no answer for why this thing came to be and who approved it, but he's definitely a legend within the Smite community and it's well deserved. This guy was utterly and completely broken in the truest sense of the word. And finally, number 1, Rituals. So another one that many of you may actually know about, Rituals were added in Season 4 as an attempt to spice up the late game of Conquest. These Rituals were a one time use consumable items that gave relic like effects without taking up a relic slot, you simply had to pay for them. So it was almost like having 4 relics once you got to late game. There were a few of these, but the key offenders were Rallying Ritual and Flickering Ritual. These two items were consumable versions of Teleport to Gods and Combat Blink respectively. Those two active items existed before the rework that changed actives into relics by the way, and they're pretty self-explanatory. So Rallying Ritual was very quickly figured out and abused as a backdoor tool. Get your solo laner who already has teleport from the laning phase to TP to a ward in the enemy's base, then get your entire team to recall, buy Rallying Ritual and TP to that solo laner. Then you have 5 full health players ready to rush down the enemy titan. Needless to say, this was not fun in the slightest, even for the people doing the backdooring. As for flickering ritual, this was literally combat blink with no cooldown that didn't take a relic slot. Needless to say, this was completely broken as every god in the game now had access to an instant teleport that could be used even while in combat. You could combine this with a blink relic to have double blink, or you could just always have one in the pocket as a squishy mage or hunter so you have an escape option against enemy assassins and warriors. It also freed up a relic slot for gods that needed to use blink, like Geb or Sylvanas. They could still blink initiate in teamfights using flickering ritual instead, and have two slots available for teamfighting relics like shell, sprint or curse. Rituals were a horrible idea in the first place, and it only took 5 patches for Hyres to realise this as well, and they were removed from the game on March 28th, 2017. There has been talk of rituals returning in some toned down form, but we're yet to see what Hyres has planned for these items from hell. So that's it from me on the 5 worst changes ever made to smite. Some broken gods, broken items, broken cosmetic events and broken map changes for you all to think about. If you have any additional changes you think should have been on this list then definitely leave those down below, there's plenty of bad changes that have been made to smite over the years. But anyway, catch you guys in another video later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.